Hello guys, I just wanted to make a quick video. I had a number of people reach out to me on my channel saying that they wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with me about a variety of electrical or mechanical problems that they were having. And I would love to reach out to you guys individually, but unfortunately, I am really, really slammed. I just don't have the time and I'm just trying to put together this video just to try to help you. I run a shop. As you can see, I have equipment behind me. We work on four-wheelers, golf carts, lawnmowers, um, side-by-side -side UTVs. We work on so much. So anyway, I'm going to go to a specific thing that someone asked me earlier in the week. He was apparently having some issues with his golf cart. He described, at least the way I understood him, there was a wire. There was, a, uh, there was some type of connection that was getting really hot and overheating. And he said he had replaced that wire. That would be my first advice to you. So replace that wire. Make sure that wire is clean and good and fresh because wires will internally corrode. So even if the terminal is clean, sometimes in the, in the insulation sheathing, there will be corrosion buildup and that wire will overheat like a toaster wire and that can cause problems. So replace that wire. Make sure it's nice and clean and fresh and make sure it's tightened up. So um, if that wire is still overheating, it needs to be, I don't, I don't know exactly what was going on with his car, how many amps it was or anything, but you need a minimum of a six gauge cable on golf carts, four gauge is ideal. So, um, but if you replace that wire, and I think you told me it was the M1 wire, I'm sorry, the M minus wire or something like that, and the motor wire, I don't know which wire you were talking about, but if it was one of the heavy gauge wires that was like that, and it was still overheating, the only thing I can think of that could be causing that is there may be an internal short in the motor winding. And let me explain this right quick. So um, on a DC motor, or even an AC motor, but in this case a DC motor right here, there's a winding. It's called a rotor inside that motor. And it's just, they take a, um, a, 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 like a, a, a type of metallic coil, basically just a metallic metallic core, and then they take wire and they just spin it around there. Just imagine a, a, a ball of yarn or something. They just spin wire on there. It may be, it may be spun, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand times, and it may be 500 feet in length. I don't even know. Or 300 feet, 200 feet. I'm not really sure. But let's, let's say it's 200 feet in length of wire just spun on a core. core. Well, this wire that they have spun on this core is insulated, okay? So electricity literally has to flow from one end of this wire, make its way all the way around this coil, and come out the other end. That's how electricity flows, and that's how you get magnetism. When you take electricity and start spinning it around a core, you get inherent magnetisms from that. So, um, But so if, if this wire is 200 feet long, if this wire is 200 feet long and it's insulated, that electricity literally has to travel 200 feet before it gets to the end. But sometimes the insulation will be breached in that motor. And now electricity, electricity is lazy. It always wants to take the path of least resistance. So if, if the insulation is broken somewhere, electricity will literally go so far and maybe it only goes 50 feet. It finds that um, opening in the uh, insulation and then it takes that path. And so instead of the electricity going 200 feet, it's only going 50 or it's only going 100. That creates significantly less resistance in that coil. It creates less resistance, causes that motor to draw a lot more power. You know, if you have less resistance, you can pull in more power. So the motor literally is bringing in far, far more amps than it should, while at the same time probably getting a little weaker. It may actually be getting weaker. It just depends on how. But um, so you... I would say that that motor may be bad. You may have to replace that entire motor, or at least replace the rotor inside the motor, or the, or the not the rotor, but um, it could be the rotor, or it could be the stator. I'm not really sure which one. I think in that one, it would probably, most likely it would be the stator, actually. So the stator, same thing. It's electromagnet that comprises the external aspect of that motor, creates internal magnetism that spins the rotor. So within that stator, there could be a breach. I've seen this. It's not something you see all the time, but I have seen some, and, and it could be, it could be a leakage of current into the um, grounding. So that the way you describe that, in in that seems like probably what it is. It seems like there's probably a short in the motor. I would say you probably need to replace the motor. Beyond that, I don't know. I, I don't know this exact setup. It it really depends on 
What type of controller do you have? You have the Curtis 1268 controller. It's a controller I highly do not recommend, even though it is in so many products. It's There's so much documentation on it, but it's a very, very sensitive controller. A, a drop of water will set off a code, and it's not my favorite controller. So you have that one. You also have a whole range of controllers that are produced by Curtis that are not at 1268. It's just, I don't know exactly which one you have. So some of them are fairly reliable. Some of them are more sensitive. Um, and then you have, I think it's called Mad Jacks controllers. You have those, and they are in a whole nother ball game on themselves. So anyway, I hope this can help you. I don't know. There should never be a reason why a brand new wire that's fully tight, that's at least six gauge, is getting hot like something is seriously seriously wrong at that point and i'll go back to another conversation another guy posted in there he said um why in the world are you replacing all these wires why don't you just replace the fuse or or why if the customer says it's not working why don't you just replace the thing that's wrong and give it back to the customer instead of charging them for all these other things and apparently this guy doesn't actually do this for a living like we actually produce quality work we do not want to see our customer the next day coming in angry mad upset and says we got way on the other side of the woods you just charged me two hundred dollars this machine worked for two minutes and now i'm stranded on the other side of my property like we don't want that we want to fix this thing where when you come to us we don't we don't want to just do a whole bunch of fake things and say we did these things and and we didn't really do them but we want to give it back to you so that when you call me up and say hey this machine isn't working i don't go oh yeah those wires were pretty bad i should have changed them and i didn't know I, I would say look i'll check that thing over very well i didn't see any any impending problems at all i didn't see any Thing that would cause a problem very soon down the road you should have been good for a while so are you sure you got the keys with y'all are you sure the batteries are charged like we can talk about very nominally simple repairs because all the more technical things we've already checked those things and we know they would be right and having clean battery cables is an absolute imperative on a golf cart dirty battery cables will eventually start building resistance They'll start overheating. They won't be conducting power as they should. And, and it really poses a fire hazard at this point. So I've never been sued. I've never had a complaint about a golf cart that I worked on that caught fire. But if you start sending them out with dirty battery terminals, not properly checking those terminals, not having good clean wires on there, yes, you may have fixed the original problem, but now you have an entire fire on your, on your hand. And so let me tell you something else about customers. When they bring a, a, a product to me for me to repair... If I give it back to them, they assume everything is right. They assume their tires are inflated. They assume their steering is not going to come off in their hands. They assume the brakes are going to work. All these things may not even be things they even told me to fix. Sometimes people don't even know what's wrong with their things. Sometimes they've forgotten. It may have been in storage. They forgot that the brakes didn't work. So when it comes to me, I make sure the brakes work. I make sure the steering wheel is going to work. I make sure the lights work. Like I, I make sure everything is going to work. And then and, and I call my customer and be like, Hey, do you want the lights fixed? Like, I let them know. I don't just charge them. But on certain things like those wires, we're just going to replace those wires because it's a fire hazard if they're dirty. If there's no, I'm not going to call you and ask you, hey, do you not want your golf cart to catch fire? Of course you don't want it to catch fire. I'm going to put it on there, and I'm going to charge you, and you're going to have a great day. Yeah, your bill might show that you paid $40 for new wires, but that's way better to pay that $40 than to have a $400,000 fire the next day that burns your house down because... I didn't replace an $8 wire, you know. So, anyway, and then somebody else was talking about fuses. Golf carts do not have any fuses that control the drivetrain system. I'm trying to think even the oldest golf carts. I I can't think of any kind of fuse. They use MOSFETs, okay? So, if you don't understand anything about MOSFETs, it's really nothing but a huge, huge transistor. And so, it uses a system of capacitors and re, uh, uh, resistors inside that controller that create a regulatory power output from the batteries. If it's 48 volts, it takes it to the motor, and it, it really is just pulsing that power, taking that power and, and supplying it and then withdrawing it, supplying it and withdrawing it. It's a quick, very quick, I don't even know what it is, could be 60, 70, 80 times a second, it's providing a quick pulse of power. That's pretty much how it regulates that power. And it does it in stages. So um, if you have an AC car, the same thing, it creates AC power. It takes DC, converts it to AC. Again, same concept pretty much. So they don't use fuses. If your golf cart quit going, you're not going to find like a big fuse. I mean, because most of these golf carts pull a minimum of 250 amps all the way up to 550 amps. 
So you're not going to find a 250 amp fuse. Like, they don't have a fuse. If you do see fuses on your golf cart, and some golf carts do have fuses, these fuses are just for accessories. They will, they, the fuse below the light will stop working. The horn will stop working. The um, street legal kit will stop working. The radio will stop working. There are some golf carts like the RSV golf carts that have fuses in there. These fuses signal for the whole controller to work. If something is shorted somewhere on the controller, it will blow this fuse. So those uh, blown fuse can keep some of these golf carts from working, but these fuses still are secondary to the actual drive system because there's no fuse on the drive system like that. So anyway, hope this helps someone. I'm going to say one other thing too. If you do have a degree in electrical construction and how electricity works, I highly, highly recommend you taking your golf cart to someone who does because golf carts are extremely, extremely complicated. I've been working on them for a long, long time and I still get many of them that I'm completely stumped on and cannot figure them out. They're not that simple at all. So please don't go out there crossing wires, cutting wires. All you're going to do is start a fire. You're going to short one of those batteries. You're going to burn up your controller. You're going to wind up way more money in that golf cart than you would if you would have just taken it to somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, it's, it's not something that you should just be experimenting on um, if you don't have any electrical knowledge at all. Like, I just highly don't recommend that. Probably the only thing you might can do if you have no electrical experience, if you take a picture of the batteries and keep up with where all the wires go, you might be able to replace your batteries. But again, if you cross one of those wires just the right way, you can create a fire. You can create major, major arcing. Like, I really think that the guy that was telling me that he was getting this overheating issue, it sounded so technical that I was like, please bring it in to someone who knows what they're doing because golf carts are difficult. They can be very difficult. And they, like I said, they have more power in those batteries than you have in that wall outlet in your house. We're talking 48 volts, 500 amps sometimes. And it's actually more than that. Like those batteries probably can supply a short burst of maybe seven or 800 amps. We're talking a massive amount of power that can completely destroy the car. I do not recommend you twiddling around with wires and cutting wires and, 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 and guessing and using trial and error. That is probably not the best use of trial and error so anyway i don't i wish i could help you guys a little bit better maybe if you send me some pictures of your cart post them in the, the comments below or something just show me what setup you have there's a whole gamut of setups out there with golf carts i there's i'm trying to think right now there's at least five major controllers that are using golf carts so and among these five major controllers there's different amp stages there's different ways to wire them EasyGo has a, four, a mechanical forward and reverse system. Club car, I can't think of a club car it does, but they use um, two micro switches that will signal to the controller whether you need to be in forward and reverse. That makes a difference entirely on how it's wired. So that's that's like the newer setup on like the DS cards versus the old setup where there, there may be a mechanical lever that actual, actually reorients the polarity of your electrical connection so anyway i don't know what setup you have send me some pictures i'll try to do my best to help but i'm just completely inundated with repairs i'm way behind i'm working sometimes well into the night just trying to stay caught up here at the shop hope you guys have a great day stay tuned to my videos and please subscribe it it enables me as busy as i am to be able to spend 13 minutes producing a video that i won't ever get paid for or, to, or whatever how do i recoup this time so show me some support and i love to help you guys send me some pictures pictures are worth a thousand words so love all you guys you have an amazing day